Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. We have a great show today. Today, we're going to be talking all about Google Takeout, and we're going to discuss the ways that you can help your seniors successfully migrate their data from their EDU accounts to their personal Gmail accounts. We have a great panel on the show today. Mr. Sam Patterson, how are you today? I'm doing really great, Jeff. Thanks for asking. And uh, you have some pretty cool things happening out there. I saw some pictures on uh, on Instagram. You're doing something with dinosaurs these days. Yes, I'm hacking dinosaurs, Jeff. What, what, what does else that would mean? I be doing? Uh, what that means is I've actually taken uh, a number of electronic toys that are dinosaurs, and I have removed their skin in a very nice and caring way. And I have taken their circuitry and made it available for programming with Arduino or Raspberry Pi as part of a big toy hacking thing I'm working on developing. Hashtag toy hacking. That's pretty cool there. Yep. Yep. Toy hacking. Super fun. It's a plush approach to robotics. So if you want to say, how do we get more kids thinking that, you know, playing with robots might be cool? Why don't we just take the toys they're already playing with and cut them open and make them do weird things? <laughs> And you can, of course, find out information about that on the brand newly designed, and we'll talk about this soon, mypaperlessclassroom.com. Josh, how are you today? Doing wonderful, Jeff. I hope that you also recover very quickly from whatever you're feeling. Uh, me too. We have a lot of great things coming on here. What is new in the world of Josh? Uh, we just wrapped up Friday our big TEDx event at the middle school in De Pere. Uh, was a wonderful second year, I would say, in many ways, uh, bigger and better than the first year, uh, very high quality performances from the students. Uh, the five adult presenters we had were also excellent as well and uh, left feeling pretty proud of my community that day. That you know, jo Josh, I've seen, uh, I, first of all, the pictures looked super awesome. Looked like you had the space looking very professional. How many of the kids uh, contributed performances? So we had a total of 15 student talks but some were paired up. So there were 24 students who gave talks, but then there were also, um, there's a st student who started like the first 20 minutes playing a cello wow. for people as they came in. Uh, she was exceptional. We had a student who did a puppet show, which was hilarious. Uh, he definitely has a uh, different kind of sense of humor, but yeah, I knew you'd like that. Mm -hmm. uh, makes his own puppets and, and does his puppet show thing. You'd love this kid. I need uh, this kid as a friend. We had a poetry reading and we had a kid play a cello. So um, a lot of cool stuff mixed in with the talks for the day. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm impressed by the bravery of the students. I mean, we had two kids who, and I never saw this in any of their rehearsals, but they broke down as they were giving their talk on stage just because of how kind of personal and powerful the things were that they were sharing about. So I've, I'm just super impressed. I mean, I, I know as a middle schooler, that would not have been my thing. So, uh, uh, right? Yeah. 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 yeah it's just super cool. That well, is great absolutely awesome. Again. And uh, we will definitely uh, plan to do a show around that. I, I love the topic of TEDx, especially with TEDx and students going on here. Today's topic is inspired by a post that was recently written on teachingforward.net by our uh, amazing co host, Jennifer Judkins. Jen, how are you tonight? Great. Good to see you guys. It is so nice excited. to see. We're talking about end of year stuff at this point, Jeff. That's we, pretty exciting. We are talking about end of the year stuff. We, uh, we're, we're not saying how many total days. I Now I'm seeing teachers count how many Monday meetings there is left. <laughs> and so there's a lot of great things here. Recently, you posted a, uh, a, a article and screencast um, about a, a way to take your Google Drive material and export it. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, a lot of people may be aware or possibly not that Google has long had a service called Google Takeout that allows you to um, at any time create an, a backup of your Google Drive contents by creating a copy of those documents. In the past, that process required you to essentially download all of the, all of the Drive contents and at the same time it would convert those into a Microsoft Office format which was a great feature, especially for people that might be changing jobs, leaving the district, or students that are graduating as seniors. Um, what we have been waiting for is uh, a free version, because there are some paid services to this point, um, but a free way to transfer those contents, maintaining them as Google formatted files directly into a personal Google account. 
and that is now available. So that's what um, what I wrote up about um, on my post to share out as seniors are are heading out the door for graduation soon. And so tonight we're going to be talking all about Google Takeout. Of course, we are here live on the Tech Educators podcast every single Tuesday night. You can, of course, reach out and connect with our shows on our check on our chat box over on TeacherCast.tv. There's, of course, other great ways that you can connect with us. You can find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. And, of course, we love it when you subscribe and leave comments over on TeacherCast.net slash audio and TeacherCast.net net slash video and before we get into our topic today i want to show off to the world the brand new version of the teacher cast educational broadcasting network this past weekend we had an extended break and i had a few moments without some of the babies around and we had a moment uh, sam and i spent a lot of time here going back and forth trying to figure out what the future of teacher cast can look like and i wanted to show it off to here everybody who's viewing off it is clean it is fresh you can check out and subscribe to all all of our shows very, very easily. We have a nice section here for educational news, which breaks down all the big topics that are happening in education. We've got a live Twitter box. We've got a live chat box, a live YouTube box. Um, everybody wants to know from me how to do podcasting, how to do websites, how to do videos. We now have spots on there for that. And then, of course, at the bottom here, we have a great section for STEM education where we're breaking things down for learning spaces, programming, robotics. And I think that's where Sam's going to mostly be spending a lot of his time in there. Of course, if you're looking for podcasts, we have all of them under our podcasting tab. Certainly check us out over on iTunes, Android, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Intune, um, I'm not sure if I'm missing any of them, but anywhere you have your local podcast, check everything out. And of course, again, we are here on our chat box as we are on Tuesday nights over on teachercast.tv. Jen, we are getting to the end of the year here, and I wanted just to kind of show off this great uh, project that you're working on here over on teachingforward.net. Um, it is called Wrapping Up the Year with Google Apps. And you know, as you said a, a couple seconds ago, ultimately what Google Takeout does is it, it is designed for people who are leaving their educational establishment and they're they're graduating. They want to take their stuffs with them. Um, let's just start with some of the basic questions here. Is this an easy process? Does the school district have to get involved with it, or is this something that the student can just do anytime that they want to? So there is a um, admin console setting that does need to be enabled, but once that is done through the district IT folks, um, then that will allow the transfer to occur. So what happens is students, actually it's very simple, Jeff. It, um, I made a video and instructions more to help people understand what specifically is transferred and what is not, because I think that's a little less obvious, but um, the actual process of transfer is quite simple. Students um, need to begin by being signed into the account that they are transferring from their school account. They need to already have created a personal Google account that has to end in at gmail.com. And they simply log into their account for school. They enter the email address for their personal Google account. They select what they would like to transfer. Essentially, there are two main items they can transfer. They can transfer their contents of Google Drive as well as Gmail. And by transferring Gmail, that would transfer just the actual messages, not it wouldn't cause any forwarding to occur. This is making a copy of all the documents, so it's great for our listeners to understand that this can happen at any time. It's not in any way disrupting the files. So it's actually a great option for people who might feel more comfortable creating a backup of documents. Now, um, Jen, I know that my Google Drive is a wonderful bouquet of documents I own, have contributed to, are shared with me, I've stolen from other people. Does this treat all of those the same? So I actually had to test that out because I didn't find the support instructions super clear on that. So I created a, a student account and, and used a personal Gmail account to just make sure I was explaining this correctly when I was sharing it out. But um, what's interesting is the files that are shared will be copied regardless of 
the type of permission you have in terms of sharing. So even if you're a view only person on the shared document, provided those files have been added to Drive. So many people get shared files and they know that they end up in the shared with me sort of category. But those files aren't really in your Google Drive. If you want them in your Google Drive, you just need to right click on a file and shared with me. And there's a choice that, as you know, Sam, um, there's a choice that says add to my drive. And that right. will allow people to organize it. It doesn't move it for anyone else. Um, but as long as you've added it to your drive, then it will copy over, which mm -hmm. I thought was interesting. I actually thought you would need edit permission, but you don't. So that with is interesting because I know that on the staff level, there's sometimes drama around shared documents when one member of staff is leaving. Yes, and I think it would be awesome if we could do a show perhaps in the fall after I've at least had time to play with it because I haven't yet, but um, I, I would love to have a show to talk about team drives, which is a relatively new feature that kind of prevents those kinds of problems when you're sharing documents, typically like curriculum documents or things where one member might be the creator, but their job might change. And as you say, that causes a disruption. So team drives is something that I'm kind of interested in doing a show in the future, Jeff. We'll have to put that on our to-do list. I think that's a great idea. You know, when I'm looking at this concept of taking things or, or archiving them, you know, if I have a document that we're all shared on and I then do Google Takeout, that new doc, are we all still shared on it? And does Sam know that there's now two copies of this doc? So no and no. Um, there's no notification given to anyone who is shared with the document. It's essentially just making your, uh, just copying the document. So of course that disconnects it. Those of you that are really comfortable in the Google world understand that the concept of copying a document is a pretty big deal because that means it's disconnected from that original. So in other words, any edits that are made to the original document that exists in your school account would not be reflected in the copy that you make. Um, and also the sharing permissions don't transfer. So it does not reshare the document that's copied in the same way. That is pretty good stuff on all of that. I mean, you know, obviously, like you said, everything's done by serial number. And, you know, the one thing I hear, and, I, and Sam just mentioned this, Google Takeout is being promoted as students leaving EDU, but of course you have all that that situation where teacher is retiring and takes stuff out, or teacher is quitting and takes stuff out. The question that I've had in my district and with others is, when you're an educator hired by a district, paid by a district, the stuff that you make for that district legally is owned by the district, right? I mean, I know we don't live in the world right now where we have filing cabinets and you're, you're wheelbarrowing stuff out, right? But if now that we do live in a world where you can simply go copy, I know that we're not taking stuff off of our drive, but let's say that I do spend 10 years in a school district building this amazing professional development thing. I can just go pop and then pop that into my, you're not popping it into another district, but you know, you're putting it on your Gmail account, which is certainly for something. I think that um, to me, when, when I talk to teachers about moving to cloud computing and, and having their files in a service like Google Drive, a very common concern and a reasonable one is, well, if I put this stuff on Drive, then, then it's in my school district's Drive, and then I can't have it when I leave. And so I think that this is a perfect example of the, the flexibility available in Google Apps. Uh, unlike a lot of services, you're not stuck there. You can take your stuff out in office format. You can move your stuff now very seamlessly to a personal account, and all of those things work to encourage teachers to make the investment to create new items in Google Drive. So I think that that is a positive. And as you say, it doesn't remove things from the district. So the district is not left at a loss of information or, or missing items. And, um, you know, as you know, that there is already a feature available in the admin console that if, if a staff member were to change jobs out of district, that staff member's entire Google Drive contents can easily be handed over to a new person or someone existing. You can transfer ownership within Google Drive to another person, which, you know, is just yet another way 
that Google Apps is, you know, adaptable to these changes in staffing. Right. And with the number of subscription based services that our schools engage in, that's a super that it's been a super important feature at the school at schools I've worked at because, you know, suddenly you have to figure out, you know, where does the edu blogs billing go to and, and who's, you know, getting the notifications from kid blog or whatever. Um, if you can find those, it's a lot easier than if you can't. Hey, hey Josh, I have a question for you as a, as a fellow tech coach here. Let's say that you have a staff member that comes to you and says, hey, I'm leaving. Is there a way that I can take my stuff out? Is it your or our responsibility to say, oh, yeah, there's this thing called Google Takeout and I can help you with this? Or do you just go, dude, that's district policy. You got to talk to your supervisor. Oh, I wouldn't hesitate to talk about Google Takeout or any number of ways. Um, I figure this is one of those kind of weird areas where if the district really wanted to die on this hill, then they would make that case clear and they would reiterate that point. I've never heard that um, in either district I've worked in where they're super overbearing about the files that you've created. I've never encountered any issues with that. So therefore, I don't hesitate in sharing that with teachers. Now. I do talk about Google Takeout, uh, but um, I also talk about other options. So, um, for instance, when I left my previous district, I had three years worth of stuff. I had classes that I had worked really hard on, created a lot of different things for, and I wanted my, uh, what do you, what's the opposite of a predecessor, the person who followed me? Um, post assessor, that doesn't make any sense. Um, in any case, the person who followed me, I wanted them to have my stuff. Now, thankfully, they were they were staying. We kind of shared some classes. So I actually made them owner of all my stuff. And so this was kind of a weird way I got around. I did take out two just so I had the hard copies and certainly wouldn't lose them. But I made that person the owner of the files and then shared them with my personal account so I could still access them and utilize the same links to those things. Um, so kind of using a pass it on approach with that, that I still got to use the same file with the same link. So that way, if I had any presentations or things that incorporated them, they still worked, but they're not owned by me anymore. They're owned by this person who's coming after me and they get access to all my stuff from before. Um, so that's something that I would suggest to people. Um, I haven't had really anybody come to me, but I know we have a few teachers leaving. So I'm going to try and be proactive in the next two weeks and reach out to them. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I would probably suggest a, a couple of those things. Now, Jen, let's kind of go down the list here because there's certain things to my understanding that Google takeout works well with and certain things that it doesn't. For instance, um, let's just kind of do a quick yes or no game. Does it copy and, and transfer all your docs, sheets, slides? Yes or no? Yes. Your Google photos. So Google Photos are separate from your drive, so they are not transferred. However, and I haven't tested this yet, um, one of the folks that I interact with on Google Plus suggested that perhaps if you, and under Google Drive, if you toggle the setting, so if you're in Google Drive, in the, in the top right, there's a gear icon, and you can choose settings. And one of the things under the hood there is that um, you want to create a folder in your Google Drive for photos. So at that point, then I believe that they're part of your Google Drive. Hmm. So that may transfer. I just haven't had a I'm, chance to test that out yet because I had forgotten about that setting. I'm not sure that that's the... I, I, I know we talked about this a few weeks ago on our Google Photos. There is a way to put the photos folder in there. But yeah. I think after you do that, that's literally just a ghost of a shell so you can see it. I don't think you Pointing? can. Pointing? Okay. Yeah, you, you can't add stuff to that folder. I'm curious about that. Now, let's keep going yeah. with this. Google Forms, which, of course, are linked to Google Spreadsheets by nature. Um, do forms and stuff come over? Forms do not come over. Ah. So that that's something, again, I tested all the file types because I was a little unsure about that because, as you know, the, the address for forms is very specific to the school. Yes. And I wondered if that would continue. And so forms don't copy over. So with forms, you would have to kind of do a workaround like Josh hinted to where you kind of, like you said, Josh, you share to your other self and then you could make a copy from there as an example. And I believe we have the same issue with Google Sites, or, or I'll say new Google Sites, correct? 
Right. So Google Sites will not transfer because, and that's been been the case with the older sites as well. Um, those will stay within the domain. Now, one of the things that we have to think about here um, is that when you're in an EDU account, you have unlimited storage. So if I have a, a boatload of PDFs or video or, you know, regular photos that are in Drive, not in photos, does all of that stuff get taken over? Or is that something that you can just simply quickly download? Or how does all that extra media happen in Google Takeout? So all of that extra media is transferred. So MP4 files, those move over, PDF files. But then as you say, Jeff, you do have to be cautious about the storage because on a personal account, you have less storage, obviously. So if those are things that are taking up a lot of space, that would be something to be aware of because you may be unable to transfer contents if you don't have the space available in your personal drive. And, and, and you know, if anybody's doing that, let's say that Sam is taking all of his stuff and wants to put it into the Waka at Gmail account, right? I'm looking here online, and if I pull this up here, Google right now is doing f 100 gigabytes of storage is only $2 a month, right? So, like, even if you did happen to have a huge Google Drive, it's not a lot of money if you suddenly just decide that you're going to be porting over the Lord of the Rings trilogy and you don't have space. Right. So how does this actually work, right? Because let's just say that I have 30 gigs in my school account, which is everything of everything of everything. Is it going to download a 30 gigabyte file onto my hard drive? So again, this is the difference between the, the classic takeout, if, if you had um, experienced that in the past, versus this new transfer option. So in the, the older style of takeout, which is still available, you can download a zip file. It, you know, it usually takes maybe you know, a couple hours or something, could be, could be a few minutes, and then that would convert stuff over to uh, Microsoft Office format. In the new transfer feature, it can take up to a week. It usually takes, um, you know, more, you know, a day or so. But what will happen is that stuff will show up in your personal drive account, your personal Google account in a folder. So it actually organizes it. It keeps the whole folder structure within that, but it drops it into a folder with the date of the transfer so that it's organized for you that way. Um, and you'll get an email notification to your personal account that it's been completed. Now, I've got one more question for you on here with all of this because it really does seem like this is a perfect solution. Um, I guess the first question is, is this a perfect solution? I think, you know, there are some obstacles for some people depending on whether, gee, I, I, you know, I only want this because I want to copy over files that aren't included like forms. But I think for most people, this is a great solution because it's very seamless and takes, you know, with, with just a few clicks, it lets your stuff get copied over. And then those one-off files you can you can handle in a different way. There are certainly ways to, as we referred to earlier, you could share to your other self, make a copy, those kinds of things. I think especially for students who don't have a huge amount of content, who are just leaving a school district, want to be able to keep, for example, the contact information that, that comes through their email, you know, when there are a lot of our kids are emailing about colleges and want to keep all those emails, um, you know, Google Drive files from various projects and things they've done through school, for those students, I think this is ideal. And for teachers who may be worried about the, the ability for them to leave with their stuff intact, I think this is a reassuring thing for them to know that they should be able to get their content out, provided that is allowed by their school administrator. And I have not, I have not encountered schools that don't allow it. I think that if it's not enabled, it may be just because they're not aware of what that option allows. But there are certainly schools that don't allow sharing outside their district, and those are the places that you might run into trouble. 
So we have a live uh, audience here, as we do on every Tuesday night on TeacherCast.tv. And Jen, before we sign off here, I have one more question about this process. Is this something that we could do more than once, right? Like if I decide that I'm going to do Google Takeout today and on the first of the month I want to do this, does that suddenly mean that my personal Gmail has multiple copies of every single file or does it somehow match and mix and stuff like that? So it wouldn't match. It would bring in a new copy, but it would keep it in its own folder. So what you could opt to do is delete the previous folder once the new content, you know, once the new copy is taken over. So um, if you're worried about just space limitations, that might be what you'd want to do. But um, it organizes it all in one folder. It does not look back and say, oh, you already have that file. I won't make it again because really it's looking at the drive contents and making a copy from there. Um, it's not checking into your previous, into your personal account to see what you may already have. You know, it certainly seems like it's, as you said, it's not the perfect solution, but it is certainly an easy solution to do and, and one that's there. I, I don't know, you know, I've never had the conversation, but you know, clearly with staff members leaving, we have staff members that are planning to leave to move on other jobs. Clearly, we have staff members that have maybe wrong done. And for whatever reason, their accounts are getting closed immediately. Um, I, I don't I, I'm still kind of on the fence about that, especially as a tech coach um, or the guy that's got a lot of the answers in the district. But I, I certainly think that the new Google takeout is absolutely fantastic. Hopefully in the future, they do have a plan for Google Sites. Um, you know, they don't have to be published or get them out of, get them out of the published version. Um, mm -hmm. Jen, where, where do you want to see this go? I mean, I know you've been studying this extensively, but you obviously have a, a huge community around this. What, what's your one or two feature requests to Google that if it could be even more perfect, what would that be? Um, I think it would be great if you could select what files transfer right now. It's kind of an all or nothing thing. It would be really nice if you could transfer easily just a single folder or select folders with like a control click. I think that that would be um, better for teachers to be able to have control over what exactly they're transferring. Because to me, a transfer is also a time to clean up. And for those of us that use Drive all the time, I need an option it gets a little to, messy. Right, can I deselect all of the faculty meeting notes, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need all of those agendas again. You, you don't want your fun Friday folder uh, going with you to, uh, to your next school district, Sam? Oh, definitely. That's what I want more than anything. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> Josh, what, uh, what last minute uh, words of advice do you have on this subject here as we, as we uh, head on into the summertime? When I did this last, it really struggled trying to download multiple zip folders for me. can't remember how many gigabytes I was using, but it was supposed to split into multiple zip folders, but not everything was coming. So I had to choose one of the other options. So there, in addition to zip files, there's a TGZ and a TBZ uh, file type. Mm. Um, and with those, they're special zipped files, but you need to use a program to unzip them um, like says it like seven zip. It's a free open source program yep. um, that then downloads them into like one zipped file. And then you just use that program to unzip it. And then you've got all your stuff. Um, and I found that was more successful than trying to have multiple uh, zipped files. I assume that this is something that you would not want to be doing at work, right? Jen, like this is one of those, put it on at home, especially if you're going to be downloading a, four gigabyte file or multiple right? no no jeff i did this like i put this on at 4 30 at work oh okay because i need to be playing you know halo at oh, home. Okay. my bandwidth my bandwidth needs to deliver the doctor strange that just came in on the notification yes in the middle of the show right <laughs> yes like, we, are, we are we are definitely thinking about cutting like, we gotta wrap this up dr strange is now on netflix i gotta go and with that, um, I certainly want to say thank you to Jennifer for writing a fantastic post and sharing it. Jen, where can they find out all the great information about this fantastic post? So if they just visit the site, um, teaching, teachingforward.net, um, it's the not the current post. That's actually related about Google Classroom and how to close that out for the school year, but the, uh, the one right below it. So, And we'll share that at the, in the show notes as well. Josh, where can we find you? At Mr. G fact of the day. And if you want to see some pictures from the recent TEDx event, go ahead and give a follow to at TEDx MS. 
Excellent. Sam, what about yourself? Find me at mypaperlessclassroom.com. Coming soon, more on toy hacking. And of course, you can check out everything that's brand new over on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, the new TeacherCast, a brand new look. And also on there, you're going to get bombarded when you first walk in there for joining the TeacherCast Insiders Program. Uh, we decided to the complete The Insiders it. Program. The Insiders <laughs> Program. Um, it is the only program that talks to you about Doctor Strange before you it actually comes out there. Um, but anyway, we decided to rebrand our newsletter into our insiders program. Um, and instead of spamming everybody like we have been for the last year and a half, sorry about that, guys, um, weekly content all around the same topic. So, for instance, next week we might decide to do a whole entire uh, insiders newsletter on Google Takeout. And then the next week it might just be STEM education. So instead of all of our recent stuff, we're going to be throwing together topics. That way, if you like a newsletter, you can save it and it's got all the STEM education stuff in front of you there. So check it out. I'm always looking for some some help, some advice. And uh, if there's something that you like on it, uh, let us know. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. We just recently revamped some of, this, some of the features on our newsletter, and we certainly hope you'll like it. Next week, we have a fantastic show. We have our friends coming on from kite learning we're going to be talking about micro credentials and professional development how to create online courses how to use online courses and what we as tech coaches out there can do when we're given the task of creating online professional development for our staff so check that out we have some great guests coming up that is next tuesday night june 6 again live on teachercast.tv on behalf of everybody here in the tech educator podcast on the teachercast educational broadcasting network my name is jeff bradbury reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students <laughs>